Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another video. Got something new in the mail today and it's this uh, MZE730 and this is a NetMD, uh, it's a Type S uh, mini disc player and it's like one of the smallest ones I have so far which is crazy how small they made these. Anyway, it does work. I can turn it on and it will actually read the disc and it's actually playing right now. But yeah, absolutely no issues with it. Uh, however, it is a little bit scratched up, a little grungy. I did open just the top portion yesterday and I cleaned off. There's a lot of like dust around the hinge area. Yeah, let's just get it to shut off. And I did clean the battery contact so now it will run off of a gum stick. But uh, other than that, I, I wanted to kind of go in. A lot of the buttons are really grungy and I think they need a separate clean. So we're going to pop this open and give it that clean. So first step with pretty much all these players, you have to remove the gumstick battery door. And there is a like a latch metal part of the, the contact that you need to get in with something like tweezers or toothpick and lift up just slightly so that it can go past. There's a bit of plastic in there that that latches onto. Don't bend it up, just lift it up just slightly and worst case you can always bend that back down that's fine and then you just kind of tuck this back in as if it were closed uh, because that plastic piece even if you get all the screws out will prevent you from further opening up the case and it's just a matter of there's a screw here oh yeah by the way imported this from um let me get something to put this in i imported this from Japan and I got it at an, an auction on the eBay auction shipping was 25 bucks which is pretty expensive but the I was the only one who bid on this and it was 99 cents I got it for <laughs> so I paid 26 dollars just about uh, not including tax of course but uh, that's pretty good I would say especially since um, well nice condition one of these you know fully working and nearly mint go for like 150 200 something um and it's one of the more desirable players because it has the uh, digital amp with the acoustic engine and all that and it does sound really good i um hooked up a remote to this and changed the uh, configuration on the six band equalizer and it sounds absolutely fantastic uh one gotcha is there are two screws on this specific model on the bottom that you also need to remove and that should be it. I've never taken one of these apart before, and I haven't even downloaded the service manual. So this is kind of going to be blind for me, so I'm going to have to just be careful. So the way these generally work is if they're jacks, you have to kind of clear the jacks. So you have to tilt it probably out that way. So I'm just going to get in here and very carefully start prying. And my goal is to not take the whole board with me but just remove the back shell and another point of contention usually are these jacks uh, the battery contacts there uh, might be an issue so i have to be very careful it might help to open this up because this part comes very readily and there is a plastic mid-frame, and I'm trying to clear these contacts right here just so that I don't damage anything. And it looks like there is some plastic trim. I kind of want to be careful about that as well. don't want to rip anything. just want to pop this out. There we go. Once you clear the contacts, it just sort of falls open. Just slowly wiggle and this trim actually plastic outer trim looks like it comes along for the ride make sure the battery part doesn't catch don't want to rip it from the board give me one sec this is going to take a little bit of wiggling Okay, yeah, there's a lot of wiggling. Uh, the plastic midframe actually has to detach. And there's a couple points where it might catch around the screw hole. So if you can just get a tweezer in and very gently 
try to separate this from that inner frame. And the plastic uh, will catch at the bottom here. I just used my fingernail to very gently kind of push it as I was wiggling it, and it did pop off. And um, so there is some plastic that will need to be st stuck down, so I'm just going to let that stay with the rest of the unit there. Just give this a close. And the buttons themselves are, interestingly enough, are molded in. I guess that makes perfect sense to the mid-frame. And we have the back here. There is some... Uh, don't know if that's like water damage or leakage or something, but we're just going to clean that off with some... Uh, I have 91% IPA, but whatever you have should work just fine. Just going to soak a Q-tip bud, cotton bud, and just clean off this area. There's some dirt and grime in there as well. One thing to be super careful about when you're re, uh, you know, inserting this is to keep this switch in the same position as the switch on the board here. So what I'm going to do actually is switch this to hold. So the actual switch is all the way to the right. And when I put it back together, I will make sure as heck that this switch is also in the hold position. Otherwise, what you can end up doing is breaking that switch off the board, which while repairable is a pain to replace. So let's try not to have to do that. And another catch could be um, the eject button also has to be in the correct position when you close the two halves of the case. So just getting the grime out um, just by wiping all along the case wherever I see it. Pretty much concentrate on the areas near like the edges and where any holes to external buttons or ports are on the case. Those are the parts that are going to get the dirtiest the quickest. And if you do need to Remove the hold switch. Let's see. Yeah, there are two little plastic fingers. Very carefully want to bend them. Back just enough. And then you can just pop that out. Uh, keep the position the same, obviously, when you put it back in. So I'm just going to... Get some IPA in there as well, and all the buttonholes. And just pop that back in. You have to be very gentle because these are just very thin plastic pegs. And if you bend them too much, it won't go back together perfectly. There. As for the main unit, it's like some kind of weird grease all over. I wonder if someone's been in here before, if this is factory lubrication that just kind of leaked out. Uh, lubrication should not be on any of this back part, obviously. And I'm not going to touch the gears or nylon on nylon. They do not need to be uh, lubricated. If I had trouble on playback, which I so far played a couple dozen discs and had no issues, so I'm not going to do this. But you might want to actually open, remove the top lid. And let's see how to open the lid there. And lubricate the the worm gear for the laser sled and the other side is just a smooth bearing that the laser slides along. You might want to lubricate those, but that should be it. Just going to go through the buttons. They do seem kind of very yellowed, but I think that that's actually the plastic itself. Oh yeah, I guess you can just remove them. So they're not molded in with the mid frame. That's nice, but they are very dirty on mine. Very dirty. But like I said, it looks like they're actually like stained. So I don't think I'll be able to totally clean these off. They're a bit yellowed due to 
I guess person's finger oils touching them constantly. And these don't press too hard. They're just held in by a little tiny bit of the plastic on the frame there. So you don't want to break them or bend them so that they snap off. Just to give you a close-up, you can see the actual plastic itself is starting to turn yellow. So unfortunately, I could retrobrite, which is, if you guys are familiar, I mean, most of my channel members would be with um, retro gaming, retrobriting. For like old Game Boys and game consoles, you can actually submerge this in some kind of uh, peroxide uh, liquid and get some UV light on it, and it will whiten it, but it's just a chemical reaction and it will return, basically, if you leave it in the sun or as it ages, it will automatically turn back to yellow. So, sort of unfortunate, but that's the way that is. Another thing is there's a lot of gunk all around the seams. So, I'm just going to clean that up and get on the door as well. Just be careful around thinner parts of the plastic when you're scrubbing that you don't uh, snap anything, because that'll be very bad. And let's just see if I can carefully remove this. Looks like there's a couple tabs kind of holding this mid-frame assembly on. So let's just see if we can very carefully separate it. Looks like it's actually wrapped around the uh, the battery there, so I'm not going to risk that. You might have to actually desolder the battery on some of the other models. I know you to get the plastic mid-frame off, you do have to desolder the, the battery contact. And to get into, if there's a tight space like here, just use something sharp and scrape dirt out. Now what I'm going to do is uh, put this back together and then flip it over and then just show you guys how to disassemble the top part. But we are going to need to get this back in. There are little latches. I actually need to re-engage. There we go. And then it fits back in. Just make sure that all the buttons click now before we reassemble. And if you wanted to go in deeper, um, you definitely could. It looks like the screws for this uh, shielding plate are from the top side, so you actually would need to take off the top and disassemble from there. I'm not actually going to do that because, as I said, mechanically, everything is fully functional here, so there's no benefit for me doing that. It's just kind of risky. So, like I said, switches to the right, switches to the right. The um, eject switch, let's see, yeah, it has to be up. So I'm just going to keep my fingers on those as I align it. And align. And obviously, don't force anything. We're trying to get everything to just kind of slot in on its own. Okay, uh, getting this back in was a bit of a pain. Um, it was actually easier to slightly remove the midframe and insert it into the uh, plastic first. Otherwise, uh, it, there just wasn't enough room without trying to flex and possibly break the plastic midframe or bend out the metal so I didn't want to risk that. Make sure your battery door is tucked under and that you're not going to risk doing anything any more damage to that portion and we're just going to carefully work our way around. Probably can close this up now. And this still doesn't feel right. 
So I'm actually going to pop this back out. I think this is supposed to be flush. It's not inserted correctly. Yep, just got my finger in there. Make sure that that's popped in correctly. So now it's sitting flush. That's correct. Make sure your hold switch is in the right position. There we go. That's flush now. These holes, the plastic mid-frame holes for the battery, external battery sidecar are poking out. Everything's aligned, flush. Battery door is still in there correctly. Now, let's open this and just a bit of this plastic. We're going to want to pop this back on. I think it was stuck to the door here. Give me a second. There's basically a, a metal ledge here that that has to be stuck to. Okay, finally got it stuck in there. It's a bit hard to see, but it's definitely on there. Now we just put the screws back. I like to try to do kind of sort of diagonal so that everything seats properly. So I do one corner, then the other, then I go back, et cetera, et cetera until all screws are in. And these screws, get them in snug, but don't worry about making them like super tight. And the battery door just slides on. Make sure you get it in the rails. Don't force anything. And it'll just clip right back in as long as you didn't bend this tab out too far. Now the top, two screws, Two screws, just remove them. And open the lid. And actually, I made the same mistake I made the first time I took this apart. One of the screws doesn't actually need to be removed. <laughs> uh, this screw, let's see, where is it? Here. This part can actually... Let's see how does it go this way. You can actually leave this one in. So I'm just going to put it back in so I don't lose it. And all this bracket actually does is when you go to open the mini disc player, it has a little lip that catches on this lip here and it lifts this cage open. Anyway, an uh, interesting thing to note is, well, yeah, you have the serial number on the door right here, and you have kind of the reflective plastic piece. And it seems kind of badly cut, or maybe it's starting to corrode on mine, but that basically makes the jewel shiny. And this is just, as far as I can tell, stamped aluminum. And here, if you didn't get, let's see, yeah... You can see this uh, plastic black trim is lying flush, just like you want it to be. Um, so we put that back together correctly, thankfully. And here you have the cage. Uh, you have kind of the spring mechanism here, and that's what actually screws to the door. And there is a little bit of metal that sticks up on the cage to catch on that, so it's not supposed to go further out, but if you actually lightly bend it out, you can actually make it open a little wider. Anyway, uh, we have the laser. Uh, we have, you can see the worm gear all the way in the back there. Uh, underneath this plastic is actually the other sliding rail. So you would need to remove this, this plastic frame in order to, to lubricate that, it looks like. We have our spindle motor here. And good, nothing looks like it's broken. Um, we have top side of like a battery cage, a bunch of holes in it. We have a motor, just about seeing the back there. There you go. Here is um, the motor. You could see when I had open on the other side, you could see the gear for that. And that's what actually uh, moves a worm gear and moves the laser sled in and out. And it's like super thin though. You can see just like there's nothing in here. The board is just that wide that long and the battery takes up pretty much all the room here 
which is absolutely insane. But yeah, it looks like clean as a whistle in there. I had a bunch of like lint, pocket lint, I'm guessing, and like dust that got in on the side here. And I, I just kind of picked most of it off with uh, tweezers. And then I used some Q-tips and there was some grease. This is actually the, the sliding locking mechanism for uh, the disc ejection. I can show you guys here as you insert it, it opens up the shutter and then it'll actually click in. So right now it's holding the disc in to get it to eject. You actually have to shut the player and then open it again. And this spring, uh, it'll latch when you put it in the first time and it stretches a spring. So it's spring loaded. And then when you close it, it undoes that latch so that when you open it again, the spring forces the disc out. So if you're having disc ejection mechanisms, it's probably going to be uh, either the spring or this little slidey bit right here. There's a little bit that, yeah, you can see that slides in and out. So that might need lubrication. Mine had like an awful lot of lubrication. I was actually pretty surprised. And um, it had gotten kind of on here, down here, and the dust was sticking to it. And some of it was actually on top as well, which is... I don't know if this was ever serviced and someone else had done that, but um, I cleaned it off and I didn't clean it off too thoroughly though because you still want to leave a little bit of lubrication on this one metal part that slides in and out just to make sure that it can. But yeah, um, a little bit goes a long way in terms of lubrication. You don't want to over lubricate things because that's how you get dust stuck in it. And then it starts grinding the dust and that acts sort of like a, um, like a, what would you call it? A polishing paste and actually can wear through metal bits and cause wear to accelerate. So anyway, um, this is fairly clean. I already cleaned this part anyway. I just want to show you guys what it looks like on the inside. So what we are going to do, I guess, I think I showed this on a previous video, but it's always neat to see a mini disc player working while open. So you can just, uh, oh yeah, hold switch is on, have to turn that off. And if you press play, so you do have to press down on, there should be a micro switch on one of these. So you do have to press kind of down to get it to register. Is this? Okay, it took me a second. It was actually, this does not use a mechanical switch. It looks like it uses a reflective or like a photo interrupter. Because as soon as I insert anything, it doesn't even have to be metal, it'll turn on. You can see the laser, it looks kind of purple. And that'll be the infrared content. But it looks slightly red. Never look directly into it. I'm looking obliquely into it. So it does not possibly blind me. Um, but yeah, you can see it does light up and it does spin. And if I insert a disc, that's actually what the second job of this will actually block that sensor to let, let it know that the door is shut. And starting to read the disc. And there we go. So just going to button this back up. When buttoning it back up, make sure this, the little metal loop here catches on that piece so that picks up the door or the, um, the metal frame when it goes to insert. Also make sure that the, uh, the screw posts go in correctly as well. They do have to line up. Easiest to do this when it's shut. Before you start putting the screws back in. Sometimes these won't line up, especially this one I know is this corner, so just pop it open and kind of hold the metal. You can usually kind of align it a bit better with it open. There you go. Just snug them up. Not too tight though. And there we go. So just to show you it still works, the battery's still in. Just pop this open, pop my disc in. So the ejection mechanism still works. And there you 
go. It is low battery. <laughs> well, it was loading. There you go. It's playing. Yeah, this battery door I've noticed is a little loose. Um, not too much I can do about that. Um, so the way that the battery door actually works, just shut this off, is um, friction. Um, so there's a catch on this side, which goes into that little bit of plastic, but also it relies on the metal uh, pressing against kind of the back. There's like a little plastic flap, a part of the door, and it's supposed to catch on that, sort of hold it in. Uh, but over time, you can see there's quite a bit of wiggle in there. So that will also affect, in addition to how clean your battery contact is, that will also affect how much pressure it puts on the battery and thus... Um, if there's not enough pressure on the battery, it might read your battery voltage as low uh, because the contact resistance is higher. So that might be something you might want to look into if all your batteries even fully charged keep saying that the battery's almost dead or the voltage is really low. Uh, that might be a cause of that. Anyway, yeah, um, overall, pretty happy with this. Uh, works. Got this for 26 bucks. I will do a little bit more cleaning externally on the case or some scuffs. I can't get rid of that. Um, someone suggested using like Brasso to buff it out. I think that would actually noticeably ruin the surface finish. Um, and it, there'd be no way I could do it cleanly without leaving like streaks or other lines. So I'm just going to leave this as is and I'm happy enough with that. And it works. That's all I really care about. Buttons are a bit yellow, but nothing I can do about that. Anyway, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. This was a really quick look at this uh, MZE730 and just general how to open it, how to clean it, how to put it back together, and generally how it works. And anyway, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.